How's it going everybody? Lucian Dev here bringing you another tutorial video. This one's going to be for 7 Days to Die. However, it's going to be on Linux this time. Uh, so if you want the benefits of having a Linux server, this will be the video for you. So I'm going to assume that you have very little to basic knowledge of the Linux operating system. Even if you have no knowledge, uh, the commands that we're going to be doing in Linux for the server are very basic and simple for you to understand and follow along. So no need to be uh, intimidated or overwhelmed by not having a, a GUI system like Windows does. So first thing first, we're going to connect to the server. I'm going to assume also that uh, you already have a Linux server up and running that you can connect to. Setting up a Linux server will be for another video. So we're gonna do SSH username at the IP address and the password for said user. And now we're in. So as you can see here, I'm using Ubuntu 20.04.5 LCS version. Uh, with this version of Ubuntu, um, a lot of the uh, things that I'm going to be using should already come pre-installed into this uh, flavor of Linux. You don't have to worry about uh, installing some of the prerequisites. prerequisites. But one thing we will need is um, one file for uh, lib32. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to do sudo app git install lib32 gcc1 hit enter password for the sudo user and that's going to go ahead and install we need this in order to run steam cmd because if not uh once we go to run steam cmd it will give us an error so our next step uh for me you don't this isn't required this is just how i like to do things you're more than welcome to use the current user, but I like to create a new user to keep things uh, organized and a little bit more secure. Uh, for a security aspect, if someone were to brute force this login, for example, they'd have access to every server in that login. However, if I separate the servers like seven days to die, that's one user, arc, that's another user, so on and so forth. If they brute force one of those servers, well then that's only one server, they're not bringing down everything else or doing whatever they want to any other server. So for security reasons, I like to create new users uh, for each server. So for me, we're gonna do sudo add user, call it seven days to die, SDTD. Then we're gonna hit enter. We're gonna do the password for that group or that user, I mean that group. Confirm that password. And then for this stuff, none of it's really necessary. Information is correct. Yes. All right. And now we can uh, switch that user by doing su space dash space sdtd and then hit enter and then the password for that user that we just set. And now we're in that uh, user as you can see there sddt at lucian uh, yt. And just to confirm that we are in the directory, we can do pwd, which is print working directory. Hit enter, and you can see slash home sdtd. So we are in that directory. So next, we want to get Steam CMD. But before I do that, again, I like to be organized. So I'm going to create a new folder with mkdir space, we'll call it Steam CMD, and then hit enter. Then if I do ls, you can see it and now I have a folder called Steam CMD in that folder. So we're gonna we're gonna uh, go to that directory and by and how to do that is typing in CD, which is change directory, space Steam CMD. And then as you can see now, it says we're in the directory with the uh, the directory right here in blue. And then we can also do PWD again if you want, and you can see that we are in said directory. So for the next couple of things, just to make it easier for me, I'm going to be copying and pasting um, some of the next commands in just so I don't have to type everything out because that's kind of annoying. Um, but everything that I copy and paste into the terminal, I will have down in the description below. So you don't have to worry. You can just copy and paste it yourself as well. So you don't have to worry about uh, typing everything out. 
So first things first, we are going to get the tar file of uh, Steam CMD. So that's wget and then this long address that I did not want to type out, thus copy and pasting. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Now that we got that, we need to extract the tar file. And we do that like this, tar xvzf, and then the uh, actual tar file itself. Enter. And then we want to get rid of the tar file because there's no need for it anymore. Right click, I'm sorry, not right click, copy paste. So to remove it, it's RM, which is remove, uh, remove, and then the, the file name. So enter. So now if we do LS, you can see we have the files here. So now we want to run Steam CMD so it can download all those uh, files that it needs to for the, just that program itself, for their terminal. So we're going to do that by typing in dot forward slash steam cmd oops if i can spell right dot sh and as soon as i hit enter on this it's going to open up the uh, terminal and start downloading all the necessary files it needs for steam cmd all right now that's done i went ahead and made the text and the window a little bit bigger just so it's ever easier for everyone to see now that's done we need to uh, X out of this because I forgot to create another directory. So we're just typing X and we'll go back to that later. Uh, I'm going to CD back into my main directory here by doing CD tilde key, which is the little squiggly line. It's called the tilde key. And that just brings you back in our main directory, as you can see here. If I do LS, you see Steam, Steam, CMD. So we're going to do MKDR, which is make directory again, like we did before. And I'm just going to name it server. Then hit enter. If I do LS again, you can see we have server here. So now I need to go back into, um, also wait, before I do that, I don't want to get ahead of myself. So if I CD into the server folder and do PWD, remember this, um, directory the hierarchy, the way it goes, because we're going to need it in just a second for the server, because we want the server files to go into the server folder. So. Just, just keep that in mind. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna CD back into the Steam CMD folder, and then we're gonna run the Steam CMD uh, file again here real quick, so we can get in here. All right, so now that we're in the console, um, we're gonna do force underscore install underscore dir space. We're gonna do slash home slash seven days to oops, didn't mean to do that. Seven days to die or sdtd slash server and then we're going to enter and then we're going to do login anonymous enter all right and then we're going to do uh, app underscore update two nine four four two zero and then enter this is going to download all the files for the game uh, inside the directory that we just did, which is slash home slash sdtd uh, slash server. All files are going to go in there. Depending on how fast your connection is to the internet and all that good stuff, uh, this will take various amounts of time. Just depends on your setup and your connection. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording, let this do its thing, and I will come back when it's done. When I record it, the second half of the video, my mic was muted the entire time. So, when it gets done, you're going to just want to type in exit. And uh, you can CD back into your main directory here, ls. Uh, you want to go to the server directory, so cd server. And then if you do ls again, you can see all the files in here. What you want to do is edit the server config real quick. So to do that, we're going to do nano, n-a-n-o, space server config.xml, enter. And then from in here, change the server to whatever you want. So if you want to change the server name, description, if you want to put a website, password, the location, all that fun stuff, ports, uh, anything that you need to change is all in here. Once you make all the necessary changes you need, you're gonna do control X. Actually, let me make a change real quick because it's not going to ask me to do that. So let's just uh, 
Let's get the website here. www.lucidev.com. All right, so do Control X. It's going to ask us if we want to save the mod, uh, modified buffer. Yes, and then hit Enter to confirm the file name. All right, now that that's done, uh, in order to start the server, we want to create a screen. Uh, we do that for the purpose of once once we start the server, we kind of lose access to our terminal here. Um, if we but if we screen it, put it into a different screen. We can still access the main terminal and still do everything we need to do in the back end without disturbing the uh, actual server. So to do that, we're going to do screen dash capital S. Then we're going to name it whatever we want. Uh, in our case, we're just going to name it uh, seven days to die or SDTD. Then we're going to hit enter. Then inset screen, uh, we're going to shut the server. So in order to shut the server, we're going to do dot sl forward slash star server. Our server. Then we do dash config file server config the XML. Then hit enter. Oh, I didn't do the equals. My bad. Config file equals server config. Now, now the server started. So to detach from the screen without interrupting the server. You want to hit Control A and then hit D. That detaches the screen. So you see detach from the screen. So to see your screens, you can do screen dash LS. And then I have two screens. Um, one's for server because that's from uh, that's from the, the second half of the video where I did it on mute my microphone. And then the SDTD one is the one we just created now. We can find out if the server is running by going into the seven days to die folder, which is this uh, this one right here, this data folder. So if we go to CD seven oops, seven days to die data LS, you can see there's an output log file here. So if we CAT output log one ten dash seventeen. Text, you see the server is indeed coming up. Um, so let's clear all that stuff out. All right, so that's the server. Uh, if you want to access the server, like through uh, Telnet, so you can like shut down and do commands in the back end, uh, default Telnet for 7 days to die is 8081. So we'll do Telnet localhost 8081. And then as you can see, we're in the server. So if I type in help, it shows me all the commands and everything that I want to do. So if I want to shut down the server, I simply just type in shut down, enter, and it starts shutting down the server. All right, so if we do sudo ufw status, you, oh, and type in my password for sudo. So you can see here that the uh, the firewall is currently inactive. So from if you want to leave it inactive, that's totally up to you. Uh, for security reasons, uh, you may want to activate it and then allow the ports. Um, so if you do end up activating it, uh, the ports to open is 26900 uh, through 26903. And then that will be all the ports you need. Okay, so let's say you want to activate the firewall. You do sudo UFW. Enable, so firewall is enabled. So if we do sudo uf, ufw status now, it says active and then it lists all the ports. So as you see here, the ports are already open for me because uh, again, I did this in the video that my microphone was muted. So what, what you would do is you type in uh, ufw allow, uh, sudo, I'm sorry, sudo, UFW allow and then uh, 26900 is probably going to throw back an error because I already have this port open. Oh, ah, yeah, I skipped it. So that's what you do. And then you do it uh, over and over again for one, two, three, uh, and that's it. So firewall is now on and active. And um, you allow the ports to come in. When you do allow, it, it allows it for both TCP and UDP. However, you can specify if you want. So for example, if I want a sudo UFW 
Um, let's say I want it port, port uh, 8080 open. And then I only want it open for TCP. So you do forward slash TCP, hit enter, type it in wrong. So sudo ufw allow 8080 slash TCP. There you go. So then it adds the rule. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, once you got all that, server's up and going and you should be able to connect to it. So as I was editing the video, one thing I forgot to mention is that that's how you open up the firewall into the Ubuntu server. Uh, next, you would need to open up the ports in your um, in your router if you're hosting it on like your home kind of network. Uh, however, if you're if the host is like a professional hosting provider, um, most of these ports are already going to be open. You won't need to worry about it. So once they're open up in your particular server, then you're good to go. And that's going to be it for the video, guys. I appreciate you guys watching, and I will see you on the next one.